OpenAI just turned its Codex model into something entirely different. Not a code helper, but an AI software engineer. In the middle of reported talks to acquire Windsurf for $3 billion, OpenAI instead dropped Codex 1, a full-stack autonomous agent that can write features, fix bugs, run tests, and work in parallel, securely and independently. It's available right now for pro and enterprise users, and it's already being used by companies like Cisco and Kodiak. But this shift goes deeper than just new features. It redefines how software gets built. Codex is not what it used to be. When OpenAI first introduced Codex back in 2021, it was positioned as a natural language to code model, trained on billions of lines of public code. It powered GitHub Copilot's early autocomplete functionality and made coding more accessible inside IDEs like Visual Studio Code. But it had limitations. The original Codex was prone to generating insecure code, making incorrect assumptions, and offering suggestions that looked syntactically sound but often failed to function properly. It also struggled with deeper context and was limited to short interactions. Over time, the model was deprecated and GitHub Copilot shifted to using GPT-4 in its Copilot X update in 2023, which introduced more context-aware interactions and a chat interface. Fast forward to 2025, OpenAI has now reused the Codex name, but it's not a recycled product. Internally, it's referred to as Codex 1, and it's built on a fine-tuned version of OpenAI's latest O3 reasoning model. It isn't just completing lines of code, it's functioning as a cloud-based agent that can autonomously run full development workflows. And what sets it apart is its design. Codex doesn't just handle one request at a time. It can execute multiple development tasks in parallel, isolating each task in a secure cloud sandbox that mirrors your development environment. This isn't just a step forward in AI-assisted coding. It's the start of something that looks a lot more like AI-augmented software engineering. So what does it actually do in practice? Inside Codex's new superpowers, Codex now functions as a software engineering agent capable of executing full development tasks. This includes writing new features, identifying and fixing bugs, answering detailed questions about the code base, running automated tests, and generating pull requests. The tasks don't require constant back and forth. Once initiated, Codex completes them on its own. Each task is run in a secure, air-gapped cloud environment, configured with the user's actual code repository. There's no internet access during task execution. Codex only interacts with the code and dependencies that have been explicitly provided. This makes the workflow more secure and controlled while still giving the agent flexibility to perform real operations on real code bases. What makes Codex stand out is its parallel tasking. Instead of responding to one prompt at a time, it can execute several engineering tasks simultaneously in isolated sandboxes. This enables asynchronous workflows where developers can assign multiple jobs in the morning and return later to a queue of draft implementations, ready for review. Each task is kept independent and tracked with logs, test results, and code summaries. Codex doesn't generate solutions blindly. It's trained to recognize project-specific rules using agents.md files, a new feature that helps the agent understand how to navigate the repo, which test commands to use, and what conventions the team follows. This allows it to align with team norms, including indentation styles, function naming, and even the use of Oxford commas in documentation. The result is output that's not only functional, but stylistically consistent with the rest of the codebase. And because Codex cites the steps it takes and explains the rationale behind its changes, the code it produces is easier to review, edit, or reject, making it a practical addition to collaborative development environments rather than a black box tool. How developers are already using it, Codex is accessed through a sidebar interface in ChatGPT, which allows users to input specific instructions or questions related to their code base. Instead of using a traditional prompt, developers initiate structured tasks. Codex then runs those tasks in the background within its sandbox, producing responses based on the developer's own repository and setup, not generic knowledge. OpenAI's internal engineers are already using Codex to streamline their workflows. According to Alexander Embiricos, head of OpenAI's desktop and agents team, many use Codex like a morning to-do list. They hand off several engineering tasks to the agent, go about other work, and later return to review the outputs. It's a shift from direct coding to task delegation, allowing engineers to focus more on architectural thinking and less on repetitive implementation. 
Codex's integration of agents.md files plays a critical role here. These files let teams configure project-level instructions, such as test procedures, file structure guidance, and code style preferences. This helps Codex operate more like a human teammate familiar with the project, rather than a general-purpose AI model. The agent interprets these rules to stay aligned with how the team works. In addition to engineers, product managers and technical leads are also engaging with Codex. Some use it to validate implementation ideas before involving developers. Others rely on it to generate boilerplate or documentation-ready code that can be refined by the team. Because the outputs are structured and traceable, it enables non-developers to contribute without bypassing engineering review protocols. The overall result is an AI agent that functions as part of the team, not replacing developers, but extending their capacity to execute at scale. And with Codex executing in isolation, logging every action, and providing clear output summaries, its role is not speculative. It's designed to integrate into real-world workflows while maintaining visibility, consistency, and control. Real companies already plugged in, Codex is already being tested by several real-world teams across industries. OpenAI has confirmed that Cisco is exploring the agent to accelerate its engineering workflows across product teams. By offloading repetitive coding and test-related tasks, they're assessing whether Codex can reduce delivery cycles without compromising quality. Temporal, a company focused on durable execution systems, is using Codex to automate test writing and debugging. These are high-volume, high-repetition tasks that typically consume engineering hours. Codex allows them to redirect human focus to more complex implementation and design. Superhuman, known for its high-performance email client, has applied Codex to help non-engineers suggest and test lightweight code changes. It's being used as a way to extend contribution beyond the core dev team, without skipping over review processes or breaking codebase integrity. Kodiak Robotics, a company developing autonomous vehicles, is using Codex to analyze unfamiliar components of its code base. With safety-critical software, reliability is essential, and Codex is being explored to boost consistency in internal reviews and test coverage. Additionally, OpenAI has released a Codex CLI, a smaller agent designed for terminal use. This lightweight version, powered by a compact model called Codex Mini Latest, focuses on faster local tasks like file edits, shell commands, and quick code explanations, offering developers a low-latency alternative for simpler needs. Pricing, availability, and who gets access Codex is currently free to use during its initial research preview rollout. There are usage limits in place to manage demand and system performance, but no charges are applied during this phase. However, OpenAI has already disclosed the expected pricing once full rollout begins. The pricing structure will be set at $1.50 per million input tokens and $6 per million output tokens, with a 75% caching discount applied for repeat queries. This makes it one of the more premium offerings in OpenAI's lineup, reflecting its position as an active agent, not just a static model. Access is currently limited to ChatGPT Pro, Enterprise, and Team subscribers. OpenAI has also confirmed that support for Plus and Edu users is on the roadmap, though no timeline has been publicly shared yet. As usage expands, additional enterprise-grade controls and rate limits are expected. This access model positions Codex as part of a broader strategy to integrate intelligent agents into professional and educational software development pipelines, starting with managed deployments before expanding more widely. The windsurf drama. Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, the timing of Codex's release has sparked discussion across the developer and AI community. Just days before Codex launched, reports from Bloomberg and TechCrunch suggested that OpenAI was in acquisition talks with AI startup Windsurf, with a rumored offer of around $3 billion. Windsurf had gained attention for building developer-native tools and workflows around LLMs. Interestingly, Windsurf had just unveiled its own suite of SWE1 foundation models, large language models custom-built for software engineering tasks. These models were trained in-house and designed to support long-duration agentic workflows like debugging, maintenance, and feature planning. They were a significant step away from plug-in LLMs and into full-stack dev integration. The next day, OpenAI launched Codex. It wasn't a teaser or roadmap. It was a working research preview. While Windsurf had emphasized building a layer on top of existing LLMs, OpenAI appeared to leap forward by introducing its own autonomous engineering agent, built internally. Whether that was coincidental timing or a strategic move remains unclear. It's also worth noting that Cursor, another startup reportedly in talks with OpenAI, walked away from the table, according to multiple tech sources. 
OpenAI has not confirmed or denied any acquisitions publicly. Some analysts believe that the Codex preview was a way to apply pressure in ongoing negotiations, signaling that OpenAI could match or outpace smaller firms without needing to acquire them. Regardless of acquisition outcomes, one thing is clear. The competition in the AI coding space is escalating rapidly. With Codex, Windsurf's SWE1, and other players like Amazon and Microsoft building agenic tools, the software development landscape is shifting toward AI-driven collaboration and possibly consolidation. The future of software engineering starts now. Codex is changing who writes code, when, and in what format. By moving away from real-time suggestions and toward asynchronous task delegation, Codex introduces a new development workflow. Instead of pairing with an AI in your editor, you assign tasks and the AI completes them while you focus elsewhere. This shift opens the door for more scalable team structures. OpenAI has stated that Codex is designed to integrate with existing platforms like GitHub, ChatGPT Desktop, Issue Trackers, and CICD systems, enabling tighter loops between agent actions and human review. These integrations aren't just about convenience, they're about fitting into how real teams already work. OpenAI's broader vision is to turn Codex into a central teammate, not just a utility. It's not about automating developers out of the loop, but enhancing how teams ship, test, and maintain software. Codex logs every decision, produces summaries and adapts to your workflows, making it compatible with enterprise environments that require transparency and control. Josh Tobin, who leads OpenAI's agents research team, summed it up during a press briefing. This is how AI scales its benefits, by accelerating software itself. As AI agents become more capable and more integrated, their impact on development productivity could represent one of the most significant shifts in modern engineering. And this research preview might only be the beginning. If you've made it this far, let us know what you think in the comment section below. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.